at the time of recording this, it's end of March, going on April, which means craft fair season is looming. And my wife has said that she'd like some round boards and some square boards and some shot glass holders this year. So I'm going to use this opportunity to get all of the leftover bits and uh, short ends that I can find, have a bit of a clear through, get them all out onto the bench, run them all down into 27mm thick so I can plane them down to the 25 finish size. If you're looking at that thinking, where the hell did you generate all of that from? I can't answer that because I haven't got a clue and there's nobody else using this workshop but me. Anyway, the upside of having the clear out is that you get all of that space back and all those little bits of timber that I've been falling over for weeks or months are going to be gone. The downside is it's all different sizes and shapes, some of it's plain, some of it hidden, but I've got to go through the process on all of it to make sure it's all square and nothing's twisted as it's been leant against the wall or sat on the shelf. It is a lot of work, but it's kind of like money for nothing because it was just in the way, a nuisance. And I'm going to turn it into a product that somebody's going to buy. So I'm going to start by trimming down the larger pieces that I've got. They're all about three inches thick, which isn't an issue. The table saw will cope with that really well. The issue is some of them, most of them have got some horrible splits and cracks and shakes in them. And I seem to remember some of them reacting really, really badly when I sliced off a piece. So I'm going to slice these down on the bandsaw first to 27 mil, which does mean I'll have to take it back to the planer to clean up that cut edge each time. But I think it's worth it rather than go through that horrible experience on the band on the table saw. So here I've got all of the 25 mil pieces that I managed to get out of all of the leftovers that you saw earlier. And that is what's left, the off cuts, the leftovers. I can't waste that, that's a huge amount of timber. So what I'm going to try and do is utilise those to create uh, some kind of pattern, contrasting timber colours to give me some kind of pattern and to use up as much of that as possible. And this is what I've created. A joy to behold, a veritable swathe of colour that will undoubtedly encourage the potential customer to purchase and lovingly place in their possession. Or it's going to induce uncontrollable vomiting and the need to run away extremely quickly. I hope it's the previous. So I'm going to start first off with the 320mm cake stands, the cheese stands. And as you can see, I've avoided making you sit through the painful and boring 
glue ups and glue snot removals and planing and flattening. Instead, I'm going to show you how I'm going to make each one of the products. All of the blanks for the circular cheese boards will come out slightly different sizes. So I'm going to use my compass just to make sure I get the center point in exactly the right place. Now, I want these boards at 320 mil, as previously mentioned. And that's my shortest bit on this board. And the whole board's way oversized, it's at 800. So I'm going to cut put 170. Square that across. Bring that down again. 160's right on the edge. So I'm going to go 162, 163. So that's the center point that I want. Okay, so that's my 160 mark. Well inside. Perfect, more than happy with that. In order to cut the circles, I'm gonna use my world-renowned patented circle cutting jig. All right, well, it's not patented and it's not world-renowned yet, but I kinda like it. And I'm gonna use this center base plate with a little bit of double-sided sticky tape. And the way I do it is I put a little pin in the bottom and the pin helps me to identify the exact center point and then I can push down with the tape on it take my pin out and that way I don't get any nail holes or screw holes in the piece itself and then on the bottom of the jig I've got a bearing so I can set this and then my router guide bush goes in there I'll leave a link to this you can buy all the 3D printed parts and the plans to make it yourself so I'll put a link to that where you can get it. So I've set my depth of cut by zeroing the router the depth stop to the top of the workpiece and then moving my gauge up to 25 mil. But I've also got a baseboard underneath the sacrificial baseboard just so that, that I can avoid putting even more scars and damage on top of my bench. So with that done, we're all set to go. Light passes and just buzz it around and all should be wonderful. One perfect circle. And now rinse, lather, repeat for the rest. I'm going to run around the outside of each disc now with a bit of 120 grit sandpaper just on a, a flat palm sander two reasons one to make sure there's nothing untoward on the outside that'll affect the next step which is to put quite a large 45 degree bevel on each disc and second reason once I put the bevel on I've got far less purchase for the sander so if I do it now it just makes it easier to keep the sander nice and flat so the next step is to write the 45 degree bevel on and this serves as primarily as a handle, but also adds that little bit extra aesthetic value to the board.
So final job on the cake stands, cheese board stands, is the sanding. 120 grit all over, then 180 grit all over, then a damping and a final 180 grit before the finish. And now for the finish, this is just pure mineral oil, essentially a carrier oil, there's nothing in it or added to it, just pure food safe mineral oil, and they're each going to get a coat of this. pretty generous sometimes you just got to improvise to do what you need to do so I've got a an old anti-static mat that I used to use in a previous life on top of the bench just to stop any drips getting onto it now I've got some cake racks I haven't nicked from the kitchen I bought them for this very purpose little Amazon job just so that the boards can dry underneath as well as on top and because I can't get them all on the bench I've got a piece of MDF on top of a chair like I said improvisation is the key some of these colors are beautiful I do like the browns, but that Paduke is absolutely stunning. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Tulip, Beach, Paduke and Wengi. Even that looks pretty cool. Someone's going to love it. Hopefully. And there's two of these, you probably notice they're not 25mm strips. These are for an order. Ash and Paduke. Really nice. And the final stage for these boards is a nice liberal coating of beeswax that's been suspended in the mineral oil. So it's about a between a 30 and a 50 50 mix just warm it up on the stove so the wax completely dissolves into the oil and let it cool and this will give the boards a lovely shine and also seal the pores against any food debris or stains or smells getting in there. Well that's it for these boards, not bad for a bunch of scraps eh? I'm pretty darn pleased and that brings this video to a close as well. Please join me for part two when we'll crack on with the shot glass holders. Thanks for watching, ta -ra.